In this third exercise, we will focus on line styles. Now in order to visualize line styles, we're going to have to have some lines within our code. So what we're doing is using ctx.beginPath to specify that we're beginning a new path. Then we're using the moveTo method to begin the path points at 150 and 150. Then we use the line2 method to draw a line from that point 150, 150 to this point 240, 240. And these are x and y coordinates. Then we're using line2 again to just draw one more portion of that line to these x and y coordinates and then we complete the stroke using the stroke method and these are all functions or methods that I'll be explaining in later tutorials when we get into building paths but for right now we have to have a line to visually inspect and that's the way we're going to be drawing our line and if you look at it right now in your favorite browser it looks like a check mark I just made it to look like a check mark so we use the move to function to plot this point here then we use line 2 to go here and draw a line to that point then line 2 to go here and draw a line to that point and then we use the stroke method and we if we were to pop in the fill method which is another path building method you'll see that it gives you a fill within those points to complete your shape but we're just talking about line styles in this tutorial so this is all we need for now now the first property we're going to adjust is the line width property we're going to make that line a width of 20. So let's take a look at it. Would you look at that? Just look at it. Now the next property that I'm going to adjust for that line is the line cap. And I'm going to make it round. And the three different options you have there are butt, round, and square. So I make mine round and I take a look at it again. And now I have rounded edges on the end of the lines. Now the next property we're going to take a look at or attribute is the line join attribute and I'm using miter to show you how to miter and that has three settings as well bevel round or miter I'm gonna set the miter limit to two it's another property that you can access for line styles we'd have to lower that to see an effect on the miter of that line if I was to move the angle of that check mark for instance move its last point to something like 250 Let's see what happens. Let's move it in even more. Let's go to 180. We change that to 5. We see no miter. So if you want to get rid of that pointy edge, you just make sure you set your miter limit to where when the line has the proper angle, the line will be mitered. The point on that line will be cut or mitered. So if we put this back on 3, we see the mitered effect. Now if we change that to round, the line join method, take a look at it. Now we get a perfectly rounded little edge down there. And there's our check mark all nice and rounded out. Now we're going to take a look at setting line dash. So we can use the set line dash method. And in between these square brackets here is where we assign the numbers that we need to create the dashed effect that we want. So let's just start with a 20. If we take a look at it okay so you can set more numbers separated by uh, commas in here so that the second wave of dashes has a 10 pixel separation so let's take a look at that actually let me change this from round to butt change this to butt now let's take a look at it so you can see we have 20 pixels and then a 10 pixel space then 20 pixels 10 pixels 20 pixels 10 pixels 20 pixels 10 so you see how that works now if I would if I put a 30 in the next position then we take a look at that and we have 20 pixels 10 pixels 30 pixels 20 pixels 10 pixels 30 pixels and it continues on that way and you can put as many as you want in there so if I put 40 for the next one and then another 10 you can get any kind of line dash staggered effect that you want in there and if we change this back to round we can round those edges again now the next line style effect that we're going to take a look at is the line dash offset so first let's see what it looks like without that setting and now what I'm going to do is put the offset in place and then run that again but you're not even really going to be able to see it unless I put my yeah, let me do this. I'll put these side by side. 
I'll just change this line dash offset to 30 and refresh the page and you can see the line dash offset moving let me change it back to 20 refresh you see it moving 30 refresh and if you animate this property it'll give you like a marching ants effect on your dashes that are around your objects go to 50 refresh and they'll just march along like that 60 you see so that's what the line dash offset property is used for and basically that's all there is to the line styles and there's also one more property that you can access ctx dot get line dash and that returns a copy of the line dash pattern I'll just leave that commented out I just wanted to throw that in that way I'm not leaving anything out okay that completes the line styles methods and properties and in part four we're going to explore drawing and building paths